Hi guys, I welcome you all to the next lecture in our anthropology series. So yesterday we had started the Hardy-Weinberg law and today I am going to complete that uh, Hardy-Weinberg law also and I told you that we are going to solve with uh, it with the mathematical formula. So let's start with it. So we had already discussed yesterday that uh, Hardy-Weinberg law uh, tries to give us a very, uh, it's, a, it's a model wherein we can create a baseline okay? when, whenever there are no evolutionary influences or when, when there is absence of any evolutionary influences right how uh, you know genotype or allelic frequencies in a population are maintained right so for that there are certain assumptions which we were talking uh, yesterday also we had discussed this slide also yesterday so I'm now moving to the next slide and that is the assumptions okay so this is uh, something that we had also si similar kind of assumptions we had read in the Mendelian population also right so we were saying that um, mating has to be random that means if we are creating any kind of a selection process for the mating so then the maybe essay just uh, next topics we are going to study in the further lectures there is going to be a concept of eugenics okay eugenics euphenics there are many concepts wherein we try to positively increase the the characters or traits or genotypes that we require and and try to eliminate the dangerous ones okay for example somebody is suffering from a sickle cell anemia it is just a hypothetical example okay and and we and we uh, stop this person from reproducing because we do not want that sickle cell anemia should increase in the population okay so what are we doing now the mating has become selective that means if any person suffering from a disease or any person having certain special attributes or different attributes we are not letting them reproduce in the population hence we are selecting the type of mates and with this we are manipulating the genotype or the allelic frequency that is going to be present in a population so the idea is what hardy weinberg law is saying uh, what we are trying to achieve we are trying to achieve a, a a a population where there is no evolutionary trends that are playing a part that means there is no migration that is happening because in again if migration happens whether it is in migration or out migration the allelic frequencies or genotypic uh, you know characteristics are going to shuffle for example if it's a it's an island of african nation okay it's a it's an african island okay and now people from the white white communities come and start to reproduce with them them what will happen now the color of the people or the the next generations is going to change they are now going to be hybrid they are not going to be pure blacks or whites right so kuch hybrid varieties are jayengi. so that is how migration also plays a part so we are trying to eliminate all those factors so uh, mating has to be random population size has to be large because if the population size is small any change any chance factor and it's you know uh, its chances of altering the ge genotypic uh, frequency is going to be very large, right? Kalwala example, 100 may say agar koi ek cheese, if any out of 100, one thing is rotten, wo zada, that is going to create a lot of effect, yeah, fir, if out of three mangoes, one mango is rotten, of course. So here, the chance factor, if even if one mango is rotten, that means around 33% of your mangoes are rotten whereas in this it is 1 out of 100 which is a lot less it's 1% 1% versus 33% so that is why population size has to be large because then it takes out the uh, the uh, the uh, chance factor right so then entities have to be deployed of course so we are talking here you you can miss this point also deployed means uh, there has to be two uh, like we were talking about it yesterday right that there are uh, whenever any traits pass on to the children it is from the deployed 
they become haploid and everybody has the equal chance of getting transmitted to the next generation so it is talking about the same thing then no traces of gene flow selection mutation migration in short no evolutionary influence should take place right and in the assumption of random mating is breached then population will not ach achieve the hardy weinberg law that means any assumption if it is not uh, you know achieved then hardy weinberg law will be breached that means we are not going to get the hardy weinberg law then okay so now you this i have just given you an example because from this we are going to solve our question so i am taking an example of frogs let us take an example that there there are frogs and they are living on an island and we have two color frogs one are the dark green and one are the yellowish green so i'll just call this green and this yellow theek hai and there is random mating that means nobody uh, aisa nahi hai ki only green ones are mating with the green ones nothing like that so every uh, condition of hardy weinberg law is getting met that means there is no migration there is random mating population size is large theek hai all these conditions are meeting theek hai and with this only i am going to tell you the formula also so now what happens is application we'll see later let's see the formula first so what happens is in a population there are alleles different alleles hai na and th that frequency you can say is indicated by the formula p and q theek hai with p being the frequency of the dominant allele and q being the frequency of recessive allele just listen to it i am going to tell you each and everything theek hai then in a population if the frequency of alleles is used by this formula where p2 is the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype and q2 is the frequency of re recessive genotype theek hai and 2pq is the frequency of heterozygous genotype now let's let's uh, try and understand what he is trying to say i am taking a hypothetical formula usne he has given us two formula one is p plus q which is the allelic frequency that means p is the frequency of the dominant allele and q is the frequency of recessive allele theek hai and if you have to find out the and and the other formula is p square plus 2 pq plus q square is equal to 1 now this the other formula that there is it it's it shows that p square is the frequency of dominant genotype q square recessive genotype and 2 pq frequency of both right theek hai now let us take the example just try and understand let me change the color i said that we have an island we have green frogs yellow frogs theek hai we have green frogs and yellow frogs and let us suppose that green frog is the dominant allele that means agar hum if there is any fertilization of green and uh, uh, yellow three chances are that it is going to express the color green and one chances that it is going to express the color yellow that means yellow is a recessive trait ठीक है सो नाउ इसमें जीनोटाइप्स क्या होंगे वट वुड बी द जीनोटाइप्स जीनोटाइप्स वुड बी ओके तो फॉर ग्रीन टू अटेन ग्रीन इधर ही हैज टू बी प्योर ग्रीन और इट कुड बी अ हिट्रोजाइगस टाइप ऑल्सो दैट मीन्स ही कैन ऑल्सो बी द सॉरी आई एम सॉरी हेयर इट इज गोइंग टू बी वाई बिकॉज आई हैव टेकन इट वाई राइट सो ये भी हो सकता है राइट दैट मीन्स इट कुड बी अट्रोजाइगस एंड इट कुड बी अमोजाइगस इन होमोजाइगस तो ऑब्वियसली ग्रीन इज गोइंग टू बी एक्सप्रेस बट इन हीट्रोजाइगस ऑल्सो हीट्रोजाइगस बिटवीन ग्रीन अलील एंड येलो अलील ऑल्सो इट इज गोइंग टू शो द कलर ग्रीन बिकॉज ग्रीन इज अ डोमिनेंट कलर एंड द अदर जीनो टाइप वुड बी द लास्ट जीनो टाइप वुड बी वाई एंड वाई इन ओनली दिस केस इट इज गोइंग टू अचीव द कलर yellow theek hai so i hope you must have understood this now let us take a hypothetical example this is all what we understand that there are okay that there are uh, you can say 400 frogs on that island 
ठीक है देर आर फोर हंड्रेड फ्रॉग्स एंड थ्री हंड्रेड आउट ऑफ दिस आर ग्रीन फ्रॉग्स एंड नाउ वी हैव टू सॉल्व द द होल हार्डी बीन बग लॉ सो नाउ द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज जो ग्रीन है दैट मीन्स ईदर दे आर जी जी जीनो टाइप और दे आर हिट्रोजाइगस टाइप ठीक है सो अब इससे वी कैन नॉट फाइंड द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द जी वी कैन नॉट फाइंड इट बिकॉज इधर द थ्री हंड्रेड फ्रॉग्स आर होमोजाइगस और हिट्रोजाइगस सो इफ वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ अलील जी वी नीड टू नो हाउ मेनी येलो फ्रॉग्स आर देर सो इफ यू माइनस फोर हंड्रेड से थ्री हंड्रेड माइनस करोगे यू विल गेट दैट देर आर हंड्रेड येलो फ्रॉग्स एंड बिकॉज दीज येलो आर ऑल होमोजाइगस दे आर होमोजाइगस दे आर वाई वाई दैट मीन्स दे आर प्योर वाई जीनो टाइप एंड द अलीलिक फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ वाई इज नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज बिकॉज वाई इज ओनली गोइंग टू एक्सप्रेस और येलो कलर इज ओनली गोइंग टू एक्सप्रेस वेन इट इज इन द होमोजाइगस फॉर्म सो इफ हंड्रेड आर येलो वी कैन फाइंड द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ येलो येलो फ्रॉग्स सो विच कम्स आउट एज 0.25, पॉइंट टू फाइव ओके दैट मीन्स द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ क्यू हेयर पी एंड क्यू लेट मी टेल यू क्यू इज टेकन एज द रिसेसिव जीन पी इज टेकन एज द डोमिनेंट जीन सो हमें क्यू की वैल्यू मिल गई वी गॉट द वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू एज वी गॉट द वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू एज ओके लेट मी नॉट राइट इट हेयर लेट मी राइट इट हेयर ओनली वी गॉट द वैल्यू ऑफ Q as zero point two five because there were four hundred frogs, three hundred were green. उससे हमको पता लग गया how many were yellow? Yellow because they were homozygous, so their frequency is not going to change. From this we can find out the frequency of dominant allele. कैसे p plus q if p plus q is equal to one, तो p plus zero point two five वैल्यू डालेंगे इज इक्वल टू वन सो पी की वैल्यू आ जाएगी सॉरी सो पी ट्रांसपोज करके पी की वैल्यू विल कम जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव सो वी गॉट द वैल्यू ऑफ पी एज वेल एज वैल्यू ऑफ पी प्लस क्यू नाउ इफ वी हैव टू सॉल्व दिस इक्वेशन नाउ वी कैन इजीली सॉल्व इट वी कैन anybody who wants to take a screenshot you can first take a screenshot because i'm going to uh you know rub a little bit of it okay so yes this information now putting these values in the second equation we can just solve the second equation with this with the help of this p square kya ho jayega 0.75 square plus 2 pq kya hoga 2 into 0.25 into 0.75 प्लस एक्चुअली ये लेट मी जस्ट राइट इट दैट वे ओनली बिकॉज देर शुड बी नो कन्फ्यूजन बिकॉज फर्स्ट द वैल्यू ऑफ पी शुड कम सो वैल्यू ऑफ पी इज दिस वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू इज दिस एंड देन वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू स्क्वायर ठीक है सो दिस कम्स आउट एज सॉल्विंग दिस दिस कम्स आउट एज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स टू फाइव प्लस जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सेवन फाइव प्लस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स टू फाइव एंड इफ यू एड दिस ऑल इट बिकम्स इक्वल टू वन सो यू सी हाउ वी कैन कम टू द हार्डी वीनबर्ग लॉ इफ यू नो द अलीलिक फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द डोमिनेंट एज वेल एज द रिसेसिव जीन ओके सो आई होप यू मस्ट हैव अंडरस्टूड द फॉर्मूला नाउ P we have talked about P. P is the dominant uh, allele, ठीक है? And this is how they have tried to show कि how you can solve, ठीक है? So in this case, uh, I have taken A A, ठीक है? Frequency of dominant homozygotes क्या होगा? A A. So all of this you just and I just told you with the help of the example. You can just read the slide. Here I have taken A with the help of A A and small A. dominant a and small as recessive as a 
सो so, इससे क्या बन जाएगा डोमिनेंट एक ऐसा हो जाएगा एंड एक और डोमिनेंट ये बनेगा हिट्रोजाइगेट एंड रिसेसिव ट्रेट ऐसे होगा राइट सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू पुट इन द फॉर्मूला हार्डी वीनबर्ग हैज गिवन दीज टू इक्वेशन जस्ट बाई नोइंग हाउ मेनी पॉपुलेशन साइज क्या है एंड एनी ऑफ वन यू नो नंबर यू कैन जस्ट सॉल्व द फुल थिंग नाउ वॉट इज द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ हार्डी वीनबर्ग लॉ यू गेट अ बेस लाइन वी हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट दैट इट गिव अस अ बेस लाइन राइट सो नाउ दिस बेस लाइन वी कैन यूज टू कंपेयर कंपेयर वॉट वॉट इफ माइग्रेशन म्यूटेशन जेनेटिक ड्रिफ्ट सेक्शुअल सिलेक्शन हिज इज हैपनिंग वॉट चेंज नाउ इट ब्रिंग्स टू द पॉपुलेशन सो दैट वी कैन स्टडी ठीक है देन इट इज यूज टू सी द नॉन इवॉल्विंग नेचर दैट मीन्स वी नो दैट ऑब्वियसली एलिलिक फ्रीक्वेंसीज जीनो टाइप्स आर चेंजिंग राइट जो द काइंड ऑफ जीन्स दैट वी पोजेस्ड वेन वी वर नॉट वी वर ऑस्ट्रोलिपिथिकस और वी वर होमो इरेक्टस नाउ होमोसेपियन टू होमोसेपियन सेपियन द जीन्स हैव चेंज एंड ऑल्टर दे हैव बिन म्यूटेशन ऑल ऑफ दैट राइट सो वी कैन स्टडी दैट ऑल्सो विद द हेल्प अगर हमारे पास एक इफ वी हैव वन डेटा वी कैन कंपेयर इट विद द अदर डेटा राइट सो वी कैन डू दैट ऑल्सो एंड इफ द लीलिक फ्रीक्वेंसीज आर नोटेड and based on that values we can uh, see the evolution of population so basically it's a it's a it's a null model because hum isme we are taking assumptions that migration is not happening mutation is not happening there is random mating but in the real world this doesn't happen but even then hardy weinberg law is very very important because it tries to give us a baseline to compare with because if nothing is happening then what should be the allelic frequency and what should be the equilibrium between the dominant and the recessive trait and when the things these evolutionary forces are acting what change it brings to the the hypothetical or the the so called hardy weinberg or mendelian population so mendelian population is what on which we use the hardy weinberg principle and we had studied the mendelian population yesterday and us pe when evolution acts and how it acts how it changes the allelic frequency and genotypes in the population we try to study with the hardy uh, with the help help of hardy weinberg law so i hope you must have understand uh, understood the whole topic i have tried my level best to uh, explain it to you if you have not understood please let me know i'll uh, you maybe make another video on this topic so guys please if you did like please like share and subscribe thank you so much